Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. I'm Josh Brewster, filling in for Jamie Glazov. And of course, tonight I have a veritable <coughs> Glazov Gang dream team. As you know, we've got Evan Sayet over here, America's number one conservative comedian. And over here, we've got Eric Allen Bell, filmmaker. And he's giving us updates on the Murfreesboro Mega Mosque in Tennessee. And Mike Walsh, the author of The People versus the Democratic Party from Encounter Broadside Books. All right. Folks, don't forget the Great Betrayal, as I've been reminding you from the David Horowitz Freedom Center, The Great Betrayal, Obama's Wars and the War in Iraq by Daniel Greenfield, with an introduction by Mr. David Horowitz. Who? Oh, uh, yeah, some guy. Who's, they made a bobblehead of him now. My, my kid complained that David's bobblehead doesn't look enough like David, by the way. But anyway. How <laughs> you King uh, David looks like a bobblehead? Okay. Evan. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the I want my career, okay. folks. Thank Evan you Sayet. Sayet. I'm a comedian. Evan <laughs> Sayet. I'm a, I'm a comedian. It's Evan Sayet late. recently <laughs> bumped Dennis Miller, who was the number one conservative comedian. He bumped him down to number two. Uh, who's three? And, well, actually. Tied up in his actually, basement. Jackie Green is no, three? No, no, actually, I was. Let me get this right. I was too until that that guy was killed over in uh, where the 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 Muslim yeah they comedian. killed the guy the other day for telling jokes about Islam so right now you're so number now one. I'm number one right. yeah. and I think that Dennis might really still be number right. one but he doesn't want to be but because what about Jackie Mason but Jackie Mason's right. four now, or five quite now I want to say something folks quite dis <laughs> quite despite himself uh, Evan delivered as Andrew Breitbart uh, noted one of the top five most important conservative speeches ever given at the Heritage Foundation isn't that and pretty Okay, seriously, yeah, think, think about this. I want you to tell us where we can find this. Okay, really you can find it. Go to go to YouTube and type in Evan Sayet. That's Y E T. Go to. I, it's still not quite there, but EvanSayet.com is being completely remodeled. But you can probably find it there as well. But that um, speech is available but at YouTube. Absolutely. Okay. And just think about this seriously. All right, you guys know me. All right. How many speeches did Reagan give? How many speeches did Thatcher give? How many speeches did uh, Pope John right. Paul II give? How many? Did, and I'm one of the top five. You're one of the top Look five. At me. So it's good. Yeah, you well, know, you in fact, I bought your speech on the subway in New York. Somebody <laughs> came through and <laughs> handing out bootleg copies. Yeah, I hope that your, your agent you knows also, about You can also numbers. get my, my uh, gangster rap songs that way. <laughs> well, listen, next time we're going to talk about the gangster rap. But uh, on <laughs> July 30th, just the other day, you published uh, to front page, many of you may have read this, uh, the signs of a Romney victory. And I want to talk to you about this. Now, you see some signs that he may be heading toward victory. I see some signs that he doesn't speak to big enough issues myself. But I like your take on this. You know, Could but, you but, tell me a little yeah, bit about two, why you see Romney trending yeah. toward victory? Well, two things that uh, you said that I'd just like to correct. One is yours is, is kind of a feeling, and, and I have some feelings that, that are not dissimilar. I was just looking at things in the news that were indicative of which way, almost like and a basketball, it was like college basketball with its, with its possession arrow. They weren't necessarily definitive, they were just, and some of them were pretty, pretty large. But everything that I looked at, everything that I saw, who was spending money and who was saving money, who was raising money and who wasn't raising money, what they were doing with that money, the fact that Barack Obama is still polling at, at the kind of rate that he is show, implies to me that he uh, doesn't yet have a message that's been resonating. Um, the, the way from jumping from one issue to another. So where's Sandra Fluck these days? Remember, that was the big thing. Now she's gone. Yeah, I wanted to read something from your article real quick here. Please, I, I, I like, like this. this. In a short time, then, the Obama team's message went from vote against Romney because he once had a dog carrier built that attaches to the roof of the family car to vote against Romney because 50 years ago he engaged in a high school prank to vote against Romney because he's a successful businessman. Businessman. This is the one that I love. Uh, but it's the one that I love. Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you, Eric. Sure. You've known some you rich kids. You Hold on a comedian. Uh, you've you've known some rich kids growing up here in L.A. <laughs> yes. Tell me why in the world Mitt Romney is a bad guy because his father was a successful man. I know a lot of rich kids who turned out to be nothings. So they had no ambition. They had no drive. They did nothing with their lives. At least Mitt Romney did something with his life, right? I, I have no idea if he's a good guy or a bad guy. <laughs> the perception among liberals, because the liberal is, movement has gone so far left, is that we're in class warfare. Yeah. And they think, well, this is a guy who doesn't pay enough in taxes and sends uh, jobs Here's why overseas. I don't buy this. Because, I'm not because saying it's John true. Kerry, I'm saying that's the John perception. John Kerry was filthy that rich. John Obama's F. Kennedy was filthy yeah, And Obama's going to charge a million dollars a speech when he's done, right? All, so, I mean, his kids going to That's going to be, I think, they his narrative. They have no yeah. values. Everything that they say is designed to, how, what can I say at this moment to advance the leftist agenda? They, there's no consistency. The Ayn Rand said there, there are no contradictions. If you think you found a contradiction, you must question your supposition. 
All right. If you suppose that the Democrats have values, then they're all over the place. As soon as you recognize the one and only value they have, well, in general, is actually anything that's successful, good, right, and successful in a legitimate way, they're, 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 they're against America, Israel. No, I agree with yeah, Devin. I mean, the will to power is what motivates Democrats and motivates the current crop of liberals that, you know, we shouldn't really, I call them regressives. I don't even call them progressives anymore, but regressives. All they're interested mm -hmm. in is power. And so they'll say whatever, by any means necessary. But here's my, here's my problem, slow. Michael, if I may. Yeah. Okay. I can completely agree with that, with the powers that be, the, the Democrat Party, the infrastructure, the, the, the people. But how do you explain my friends? All right, They're not fascists and they're not interested in power. They know nothing about Marxism. And how is it they buy into this crap? I had a person actually say to me that they, with, with, with all the concerns about the Straits of Hormuz and all the, the Middle East kind of conflagration and blah, blah, they couldn't vote for him, uh, Romney, because he put a dog on his roof. No, no, no. The reason why, the reason why your rank and file Democrat but will not consider dog. Romney at all. He put it in the roof of his mouth. I'll, I'll like tell you right now. I, I wrote a hundred articles for Daily Coast. I was in that world for a long time. It's really simple. They've not forgiven the Republican Party for the Iraq War, for George Bush's constant jihad with the American language and his his bad judgment for McCain being senile Wait, and choosing Sarah Palin. And they think that Republicans are gullible second, and uh, angry Eric. and they uh, and the and trust is FBI. gone. I'm gonna Any Republican, they just dismiss it. I, I'm going to say this, Eric. It may seem this way, but I really believe that there is a center. And that is where the election is won, is in the center. Agreed. And that center went for Reagan. And I think that that center yeah, but could you know what changed everything? I think they could reemerge. And, and I think that, that if Romney were willing, Mike, you just jump into this. Touch some third rails. Talk about illegal immigration. Ask people, why are you right. dropping the word illegal? Why aren't you talking about radical Islam? Touch some third rails. Judge, and I'm I, telling you, the, the center of this country about will, go, will go for you. Right. The whole point of, uh, of what Romney has missed is that the people are hungry for leadership. So right. they want to see somebody stand up. Because what I've discovered dealing with the left for 40 some years is that it's a Potemkin village. If you kick that building, the flat will fall down. There's no there there because there's no real moral center to this movement at this point. They want to see the center, the American mm -hmm. center, wants to see moral leadership from our side. I and what I, what I think yeah, the left is mostly a reaction, not the far left, but the rank and file. They're reacting to something well, rather wait, than staying. But I do, wait a second, we're talking about the absence also of the traditional Democrat, and I think that the traditional Democrat is could reemerge. I mean, if Obama I think keeps, so. uh, keeps I, blowing I think it, one decision tough. after another, I think that no? you know I'll vote think? for Romney because I'm voting against Obama. Okay, I haven't found anything about Romney that I like at all. Well, did you like that he said that Israel? Like, you know what I like about Romney? Romney culture is that he doesn't represent the Democratic Party and that he's not Obama. Well, Other than that, I'm really hard pressed. Well, I'll tell you what. I, between reason. what you're I will saying, vote for him, between but I'm what you're not saying about it, I'm between what you're saying, what he's him. saying, I I do believe that Evan might be onto something where he might be starting to stay on his point. He's Evan is pointing out in front page that Romney is consistent in his message. Evan, go ahead. You wanted to add? Well, to this well I was going to agree with you, but. And then I decided I really don't want to agree with you. So no, what, I like what do I do? When you're it's what best do I do? not to what agree. Do do no, it's you best not to agree. It makes for better television I mean, if you I, don't. I think there's a, 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 a <laughs> residual hatred. The left thought that Bill Clinton was so great that it was going to be that it was going to be Al Gore and that was going to be the end of the Republican Party. And it was what what right. did uh, Carville write? Uh, he wrote a book about the. 50, next 50 years, next 100 years. And all of a sudden, not only did, did Gore not win, but Bush stole it. And then this, just an evil man named Al Gore, he betrayed us. And, the, and it just be, it grew and grew and grew. And now they, they just scream hatred. All right, but in all fairness, a president who left us with massive debt, who grew the government, who took away our rights under the Patriot Act, who bombed a, a country that did not attack us. You sound us. like a liberal. Not a he conservative. Took away our rights. Took well, away our not rights a conservative. Yeah, I, I don't take as grim, I don't take as grim of you. I don't take as grim of you of that Patriot yeah, Act. No, do I. I think that as with most things like the Patriot Act, uh, the most vociferous critics of the Patriot Act, I'm not saying you, have not read it. But and would I, you I, agree I, that Bush was not a conservative? He, he was yeah, a I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. He was way too Republican. He left us a lot. He admitted, he admitted Absolutely. he wasn't a conservative because when you say I'm a, con a compassionate conservative, when you have to put a modifier in there well, that insults your own values, period. that's correct. He was not a conservative. Okay. But he did some conservative things. He was certainly right of center. Yeah, but he also spent he spent way too much to be considered. That's correct. Conservative. Mike finished. Well, his conservatives office. are going to have a problem because they're not in love with Romney. I, I wrote a lot of very critical things about Romney in the primaries. 
but uh, we're stuck with him. So what has to happen right. to the Republican Party is it has to be like alien. The thing has got to, we have to be the thing on the face of the Republican Party. Go down, burst out the chest yep. of the thing, mm -hmm. and take it over. I, I want to finish. People have to lead. They I, have I, to look I, I want to finish with, with this tonight. And in fact, I, I'm, I'm glad yeah, that I. Yeah, this was my segment. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's too short. The show is too short. What do you want me to do? Okay, here, here's, here's the thing, folks. We, we have to have more than just uh, objectivity and, and an assumption that people know what we're talking about as conservative, about our founding principles, et cetera. The fact of the matter is, we need people like America's number one conservative conservative comedian, filmmakers uh, like Eric and, and authors like Mike to show people that we really have more in common here than we think and that this political divide, uh, we have to fight radical Islam. We have to fight for our our principles uh, hard. We have to stay strong. And the fact of the matter is we have to find new ways of doing it. We have to be humorous. We have to make films. We have to reach out to liberals. We have to spread a message uh, about our freedom uh, that doesn't just come uh, out, of a, uh, out of a speech or out of a book. We have to find ways to reach them through showbiz, pop culture, and all that great stuff. Folks, The People versus the Democratic Party by Mike Walsh and The Great Betrayal from the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Thanks so much for joining me for the Glazov Gang. Thanks to Evan. Thanks to Eric, and thanks to Mike.